You need the roof trim fabric and the roof trim lining for this piece. If you take your roof trim lining and flip it over so you can see the wrong side of it, and then get a tailor's chalk or a disappearing fabric marker, whatever you would like to mark the fabric that you won't be able to see later. And on the wrong side of the lining, you want to trace the stitch lines from the pattern piece using your um, tailor's chalk or disappearing fabric marker. If you're super advanced, what you might prefer to do is just draw a line straight up um, from each of these uh, points and mark where you want um, uh, this bit here, where you want to put your needle down to change direction. Because what we're going to be doing is sewing along these lines, put the needle down and then turn the fabric in the sewing machine and then continue on in the next thing. And that means that you can get a nice crisp edge. You can see I've not drawn that quite clearly enough. I will fix that. Um, then once you've got that, we are going to take our, um, our roof trim fabric and place our lining um, um, onto the roof trim fabric so that they are right sides together. So um, right side of lining, right side of the roof trim, and then you're going to pin or clip them in place along this edge here. And what I recommend you do is make sure to always put a clip in the middle bit. Um, you can put as many as you like, um, but I tend to put kind of one in the middle um, and one on that uh, in the bit in between. And then we're going to sew them. Like that, all the way along. Now you'll find the um, seam allowance lines here are a half an inch. So um, you can follow the half an inch marking on the on your plate on your machine or you can stitch along the lines the reason we've drawn these on is so that you can stitch along them um, and it does i think make it much easier so uh, we're going to start sewing and we're going to uh, just back stitch a little bit to uh, make a knot and then we're going to go along to where that first point is and then once you reach that first point and i'm just using the the turning wheel on the side of the machine to get this precise I'm going to make sure my needle is down. I'm going to lift my presser foot up, turn my fabric and align the fabric so that the blue line is coming straight out from the machine. And then I'm going to keep sewing and I'm going to do this for all of the little scallops. I'm going to turn my fabric in the machine as we go around the curve, making sure to keep the uh, fabric and the lining together and to sew on the blue line. And then I go up to the end of this point, I'm going to put the presser foot down and my machine has a button just up here where I can put the presser foot down or I can use the crank. Lift, uh, sorry, the needle down. I'm going to lift the presser foot, turn it all the way around and realign it so that the blue line is coming out the front and then continue on. I'm going to repeat that for all of the little scallops, putting my, my, my needle down and turning the presser foot when I get to the point of one of those curves. Next, we need to reduce bulk so that this will turn through properly. There are a couple of um, kind of pain points. One is every time there's a little um, change of direction, we need to snip all the way up close to it. So I'm going to use little scissors and I'm going to use just the point of them. Um, you can use big scissors if you want, but just be very careful. You want to go as close as you can to the stitching without actually cutting it. Um, so that's the first thing to do is to snip all the way up so that this will open out. And then if you have pinking shears, you can cut along here um, uh, to about half to a third of the length. So you're going to chop off quite a good chunk of the seam allowance. And a pinking shears will... I've got some here, so I'll show you. Uh, pinking shears uh, will uh, make little um, uh, triangles into your fabric. So you're going to go along every scallop like this and just trim it using your pinking shears. So um, that's one way to treat every scallop. Alternatively, um, another way, if I do another one along here. Um, so this is one, let's pretend I don't have pinking shears. What I'm gonna do for that is trim um, about half of the seam allowance off. So it's nice and neat. There 
there we go so that's nice and neat it does though have um uh, it's still going to have too much fabric in here because this is quite a tight curve you will need to go into it um, every now and again um, to give it a bit of room this is called making notches and you're basically going to just cut out little triangles about every um about once an inch along all of the curved parts so i like to use little scissors and the points to get in here and do this so i'm going to go all the way along each of the scallops so that takes a little bit of extra time uh, but that then will allow it to turn through and sit nicely so whichever your preferred method is do that now and then we're going to turn it through so i've now trimmed along all of the bottom here and i'm going to take my fabric and turn it right sides out and um, I've got to poke all of these little uh, scallops out. Um, now, when they get out, they're not going to look great. <laughs> they're going to be all wonky and funny looking. So uh, what you need to do is get something. Um, if you've got long nails, you could use your nails or um, you could use a blunt knitting needle or something like that and push from the inside, push this um, seam out so that it sits flat and what you're trying to do is get the seam line all the way on the outside so that there's no little folds of fabric and roll it all the way out like so and then give it a press the whole way along so this is them all now pressed you can see I've poked all of the edges out if it doesn't go out before you iron it give it a bit of a roll like that and that the seam line should come to the edge here once you've got them how you want them, optionally, uh, we can then top stitch all the way around here. Um, you do not need to do this. It will be visible on the fabric. If you don't like top stitching, you can skip it. Um, I know, though, that this table tent will almost certainly need regular washing as my kids use it. And as soon as I wash it, this nice pressed edge is going to vanish and go all bubbly again so i'm going to top stitch around the edges of my scallops um, if you would like to do that as well there we go all stitched um, uh, that is now ready to be attached we're now going to attach the roof trim to the actual side of the the, the tent the wall of the tent so this is horizontal this is vertical on my tent so my tent piece um, is like this this is the front piece so that's the top edge there and what I'm going to do is place um, the fabric right side up place my roof trim right side down on top of it and it should be exactly the right length to attach at this end and just run um, across the top raw edge here and match at the other end. If you find that you haven't cut yours exactly precise, firstly, please go check that you've got the right roof trim piece. They're all assembled, sewed like this in the same way, but they do they are different sizes for the different sides of your tent, <laughs> um, and depending on the shape and size of your table. Um, and then secondly, make sure that you've got your wall piece the right size up, and that you've got the right size wall. This is a good time to double check because it is going to fit on the table. It is much easier to um, change the size of your piece of fabric than it is to change your table at the end. So um, this should match exactly. Yay, it does. Um, if it doesn't, check that. And if you've just cut uh, one of them ever so slightly too big, then what I recommend you do is just center the roof trim um, on the on the on the wall piece now what we're going to do is stitch um, along the short edge and along this top edge using a quarter inch seam allowance all our actual seam allowances are half an inch people do wonder sometimes why we use a half inch seam allowance when it's so big um, and that's so that when we want to baste things on when the pieces are this big it's much easier to um, to baste, which is a, a, a stitch that gets hidden inside the seam allowance. So just to tack it on, to hold it on using a quarter inch seam allowance, than it is to try and um, remove the stitches later or to do a really, really small basting stitch. So if you don't have that question, ignore what I just said. If you do, that is why. Um, everyone is different and that's just how we like to do it. So the instructions are, <laughs> that little side note aside, um, uh, pin this on and then stitch along the short side and all the way along the top and then down the other short side at the other end using a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, this is going to be a stitch that is hidden inside the seam um, 
so you technically would use a basting stitch which is a long loose stitch that you can remove later but frankly because it's going to be hidden inside and this is part of why we do such big seam allowances um, just use a normal straight stitch it'll help give it structure and hold um, and we're not going to be removing it later so you can just use a normal straight stitch for that this is now attached on this top edge so um, the roof trim is loose if you want to particularly want this to be held down so it can't move you could stitch it on uh, but I quite like it being loose so I'm going to leave mine like that we're going to add the window to the door first so you will need the door um, window and the door window pane put the pane aside for now and just grab this window piece uh, you will see that it's got four holes in the middle make sure to cut those out they are not guidelines they are actually for cutting and that's the same for all of the window pieces and then if you flip it over to the wrong side what we're going to do is mark using either tailor's chalk or a disappearing fabric marker the seam allowances around each of these little squares and then also around the outside if you're super experienced uh, you might feel quite confident doing this without markings uh, but if you are new to this i do recommend you to put the markings on so you'll need a ruler that has a half inch uh, marking on it and then around each of these windows I'm going to go and mark half an inch from the edge and um, and then draw um, rectangles around. So like so, you're going to mark and then I'll get one here that I have handily prepared by the, the magic of video. So if I zoom in here, you can see in Taylor's Chalk, there is a, a rectangle around each of these windows and also around the outside. So all of those are half inch markings. And what I've done is I've marked it and then I've used a long ruler to place it all the way down because these, these windows should be identical. So you can draw one side and then the other and then you'll know that all of your lines are nice and equal. So if you do that now with both of the door window frames. Next, we're going to get some scissors and we're going to snip diagonally from the corner of the square of the rectangle here up to the corner where your seam allowance is. Um, now I'm going to go pretty close, but I'm not going to go over it. And I'm going to repeat that for all of these little rectangles uh, or squares, rectangles. It'll depend on which window we're doing. All of the windows we're going to assemble in the same way. So... These are now, you can see there's a little diagonal marking and we're going to repeat that with all four windows. So next up, um, we then want to fold along each of these lines here, like I've done here. So we're going to take each of these little flaps around the squares and fold them along that line that you've marked and then give it a press. So this is going to hide all of the raw edges underneath. So if we flip that over, you can't see any raw edges here. So repeat that with all of these little windows and then we're going to do the same thing on the outside. We're going to fold along that stitch line there along all four edges. This is it now all folded under and you can see I folded along these blue lines. This is all folded in half an inch. Then when you get to the corners you will find there um, the little fold often hangs over the edge if it's not a precisely square. So to deal with that Fold it so that it goes into the middle like this, so that this is hidden away and give that a good press. This window frame is now ready for us to add the window pane, the glass. So this is what it looks like from the front. It should be all nice, um, clean edges. And if you've got any threads, um, uh, carefully snip or uh, remove them. Then what you want to do is get your, your plastic, your window pane, and we're going to place it so that it's centred over, centred behind here. It's <laughs> a so see-through, so it's really hard to show you. Um, let me pull it up so you can see it. It, it comes to... Uh, in, <laughs> it finishes, I'll point to it, it finishes here and here, um, so it's inside this, this folded edge, so it's not overlapping it. And then if I turn it around here, it's um, it's ending there and there. So it is it will be finishing somewhere between this inside edge and this outside edge. And the goal is just literally to hide it behind the window pane, uh, hide it behind the window. Now, with this see through thing that's really difficult to maneuver, uh, what we want to do next is to pin this in place. Uh, but 
obviously don't pin in any of these gaps here because it can leave a little hole uh, but also you want to what we want to do is we want to pin them together um, here so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin it a little bit on the outside um, I mean on the underside because I want to get it just attached and the second I flip it over it's going to move and it's really hard to see so put a few pins in here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and I want to pin from the out from the right side because we want to stitch around from the right side and so it's more helpful that the pins are on top now we want to pin from the right side of the fabric um, something to just check is that you've got your window square because you've now got lots of holes in this the this layer here can can kind of um, uh, distort so make sure it is square and then you want to pin the um, plastic clearly to your fabric and so I'm going to pin um, in the middle and on the edges and then we're going to top stitch around each of these little interior squares or rectangles to um, hold the um, uh, to hold the plastic in place and you can remove any pins that are underneath once you start getting it on here so we're going to top stitch around each of these once you've got that pinned on, you can go ahead and do that. Now you want to place the window onto your door piece. So this is my door piece here, um, as per the markings on the pattern piece. And we're going to stitch around close to the folded edge um, all the way around it. So we've now stitched this on. You can see the, the window is now attached. The next thing we need to do is cut out the back fabric here, but you want to be careful how you do it. We're going to pull the, um, if I put this like this, we're going to pull the two fabrics like so, and then snip into here so that we can cut around. So this is now, if you see uh, the back fabric is quite far away from the front one, I'm going to get this back fabric and I'm going to snip into it now. To make a hole. So now there's a hole in the back of my, um, the back of my, behind my window. Then if I take my scissors and I carefully um, snip out, what I want to do is snip to in between, hang on, in between um, this, I'm going to cut away this fabric in between the window frame so where you cannot see it on the from the right side of the fabric anymore like so so this is my plastic here and if I turn this over you now can't see the raw edge on there like that and we're going to cut all the way around Now this fabric is now scraps, you can pop that in your scraps pile and we've got our window here with the plastic totally intact and you can now see through our window. Now how we deal with these little detail pieces um, is going to be the same for all of them. If you're using double sided interfacing you want to peel the paper backing off. Um, this paper backing can be discarded or go into your scraps pile and then you'll see that there is a glue um, on the back of it and we're going to place it into the right place do check it by the pattern piece this is the door handle and um, press that on now each of the different brands of this double-sided interfacing has different instructions but basically you're going to use the instructions that came with it um, I would get a pressing cloth which can just be any uh, piece of um, a clean quilting cotton that's not going to have any colour come off it put it over the top and then give it a press some brands you find better do work without steam some work with steam and press that so that it is um, firmly attached and then what I like to do is wait for it to cool completely and then stitch around it and then that holds it on there means any little picking fingers don't take it off <laughs> etc um, if you are not using double sided interfacing, if you're using fabric glue, attach that on as per a manufacturer's instructions and stick it on. If you are just stitching, um, you might want to use a blanket or an applique stitch or you might just want to use regular straight stitch. I'm going to use a regular straight stitch 
um, then you put it in the right place, pin it on and stitch it. So whichever one of those you're doing, fabric glue, double-sided interfacing, which is what I'm doing, um, double-sided interfacing and stitching is what I'm doing, or just stitching, that's how you're going to attach these. So pop this in the right place according to the instruction, according to the um, uh, the pattern piece, and then, um, uh, then you're going to um, uh, um, glue and then stitch that on. Um, I have just ironed this on. One thing to say to be careful of is with this plastic here, don't put your iron on that at all. Most irons will uh, melt most vinyls. So be very, very careful not to put your iron on there. So I've pressed this on and now I'm going to stitch around it. I'm not going to give you those instructions every time we get to one of those pieces or the videos will be super long. That is going to be the same for every one of these pieces that you see has double-sided interfacing. They're called detail pieces and I'll show you the order in which we put them on, but you're going to apply them in the same way from here on through the sew along. So we've now completed the exterior part of the door. We want to do the interior part. If you take your window and we're going to do exactly the same thing, measure around the boxes a half, a, half an inch and around the outside half an inch, um, trim into those corners, fold it all out so that you have your window frame ready to use. Now, every time we do a window, we're gonna follow these exact same steps. So make sure to take note of them because there's a few windows in this house if you're doing all of the sides. Um, once this is ready, we do not have a piece of plastic to put over it. We're gonna use it just like this because there is only one sheet of plastic for each window but um, two window pieces either side. So your window frames, two window frames, exterior, interior, and then the window pane in the middle. Next, we're going to put this window frame onto the door. So you'll need your intern, uh, interior front door piece. Um, this, you might have it with the bedroom, these two pieces, because um, if you're doing the, the in, interior, interior front bedroom, um, these I think are with the cutting checklist for that. But Grab that because we are going to finish the door in its entirety with the exterior front piece. So you've got your window frame, it's all ready. We've got our door, it's all ready. What you can do is uh, place the window frame on it as per the pattern piece. There's no plastic underneath it. You could pin it and you could stitch it and that would be great. But what you want to do is make sure that you haven't misaligned anything before you sew it. Because once we've stitched this on, and we're then going to cut out this back bit here so that you can see through to the front part of the door. So what I recommend you do is you get your um, exterior front part of the door and we're going to um, create this in the opposite way. So we're going to place them as if they are right sides together, the two doors, and we're going to get the placement of the window that way first. So I'm going to put my window down against my other window I'm going to check it's lined up, make sure that I've got it um, the right way around. And what I'm looking for here is to see that there's not a massive, you know, big difference that it's not set like that, for example. So that would be a, an exaggeration, but I want to get it as lined up as possible. And you might find if you cut them, I cut these out together. Um, there we go. That It's ever so slightly off because it's by hand of how you've done it. So... Then I've got that there, and then I'm going to very carefully lay my door piece on top of that. And I'm lining this up on the top edges. And what I might do here, actually, is just pin these together for now to hold them in the right place. We'll unpin it later, but I want to get this window perfectly lined up. So I'm going to line up these raw edges together. And then I'm going to line up down the sides. Make sure the door is directly over the other door. So I'm happy with that. I can see this has moved a bit though. So if I fold this back, and I'll get this back in this perfect position. So this is just a little bit of trial and error. And then I'm going to very gently roll this down so that it doesn't move. And then what you want to do is pin through the window and the door, the interior window and door only, not the exterior one too. And then we're gonna sew it on, just like we did the other one, and then we'll cut out the, the fabric behind the window. So then you've got your, um, uh, you'll be able to see through it.
I want to get all four corners so that it doesn't move because it's got all the holes in the middle it can distort really easily so there we go that's roughly pinned on I can take this off and then now I know you can just double check yes that's good I'm happy with that I can put this aside and now I can focus on this so what I want to do next is transfer my pins to the front and then I'm going to stitch around the outside here I'm not going to stitch these inside bits here yet. I'm just going to stitch around the outside um, and then we're going to cut the interior out. So um, if you want to, you don't even need to pin the middle bit. You could just pin this outside bit here and then make sure to remember to remove your pins from underneath before you then sew it. And when we um, get to these corners, make sure you've got the any little folds tucked under and then go ahead and sew it using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Right, I'm ready to sew. All the way around this outside. This is now stitched on. You can see I have sewed around the outside but I have not sewed this middle bit here. If you want to um, place this right sides together with your other door piece to check that it's all in the right place. Once you're happy we're going to do the same thing we did before is we're going to pull the two, this one's easier because you can hold it, you can pull this away and snip this back part of the window out. Now, um, uh, again, your, uh, we don't need to go all the way up to um, the sewing line. What we're trying to do is just cut it somewhere in the middle of that window frame so that you can't see it from the right side of the fabric. Like so. Once you've got your um, window piece prepared, then you can place the doors right sides together again to get the placement of the handle, or you can get that off the pattern piece. Um, exactly the same as we talked about before, we're just going to keep using the same techniques to attach these small pieces. So for me, I'm going to press that and then I'm going to stitch it. This is now, door handle is now sewed on. So what I'm going to do is place them right sides together and um, then we are going to pin the two long sides and the top short side. So make sure underneath, um, this is your last chance to correct any of the, the window not lining up. Um, so that you know for the next step, we're going to be stitching around these squares here, the inside squares, but we're not actually gonna stitch around the outside. So what you're most interested in is making sure that these internal squares line up. Um, and then if you pin the two short sides and the one long side, then um, I should say that again more clearly. The short side, the bottom short side. <laughs> so we're gonna pin it along the bottom and up the two sides, because remember the door is going to be attached at the top. So it's the top where we want to leave the raw edges open for turning it through. So all the way down one side so we're going to sew we're going to sew down the side along the bottom and then we're going to sew up the other side as well so if you do that pin it and then stitch it using a half inch seam allowance so this is now stitched together you can see it's open at the top but i've stitched the two sides um two long sides and the short edge at the bottom what you want to do now is trim the bulk at the corner so I'm going to snip off this corner piece here but I'm leaving it so that there's a bit of room between the raw edge and the stitching I don't want to make a hole I just want to reduce bulk so that when we turn it through that corner is not bulging with loads of fabric so um, do that for both sides um, and then we're going to turn it through to turn it through go to the top and you're just going to put your hand in grab the bottom and pull it all the way out and then once you get it all the way out what we then want to do is push the edges out so that they are nice and square 
uh, and when you get to the corners grab uh, something blunt but pointy which it sounds like an oxymoron uh, it's got to be blunt you don't want to poke a hole so don't use scissors um, so a knitting needle this is a point turner specifically for this but um, a knitting needle or a chopstick is usually good and you're going to poke these corners out so they're nice and square and then give all of that a good press make sure when you're pressing to avoid the plastic in your window we're now going to do two bits of top stitching firstly on the outside edge stitch all the way down the side along the bottom and up the other side one eighth of an inch from the edge and then we're also going to do the windows now um what I recommend for this is that you actually stitch it from the exterior of the of the window, not from the interior. And that way you can stitch over the top of these lines here. Um, if you find that they are way outside, you could hand stitch this, uh, but hopefully they will be approximately aligned from the alignment that we did before. So um, pin them together so they're not going to move. And then we're going to stitch around the outside of the door and also around all four of these little windows. So you can see I've stitched around each of these. I've just gone on top of the stitch lines and now my two layers are joined together. There's no loose fabric here. So that is now all complete and we're ready to attach some door straps. For the door straps, you will have four pieces. These are the same for the garage door straps as for the front door straps. If you want to do them at the same time, you can. Um, take your each of your four pieces of fabric Fold it in half along its length and then we're going to stitch along one long side and down the short side and then we will clip that little corner and turn it through. So do that with all four of these now. So you can see I've stitched along and down and then I'm going to take each of these corners and clip them off to reduce bulk. So for all four of these um, straps and then we'll turn them through. I don't like dropping the scraps onto the screen. <laughs> there we go. Right, so I'm going to turn them through using my trusty point turner and then give them a press. Um, if you struggle to get them um, through like this, uh, then um, uh, what you can do is grab a knitting needle or something um, to help push it through from the inside. Once you've turned them through and given them a good press, you should now have four finished straps. And then you want to get some um, hook and loop tape or uh, the brand name that you're probably most familiar with is Velcro. Um, this hook and loop tape, you'll find there are two sides to it. There is a scratchy side and a soft furry side. We're going to refer to it as the script, as the, the hook or scratchy side and the furry or loop side. We're going to use quite a lot of this through the project to attach different things. Um, the one that I have got here um, actually has a backing on it and it is sticky, which is really great and easy to use. The downside to using one like this is as you sew through this, it does leave gunk on your needle. And I find that firstly, it makes my threads bunch um, if I don't clean my needle often or and or um, it makes my um, makes my machine skip uh, skip stitches. So uh, if you've got regular hook and loop tape, you're just going to pin it on and then you're going to sew through it. If you've got the sticky stuff, I do recommend that you actually sew it on because it will um, it will stop little fingers from peeling it off later. Um, and especially if you wash it, it really does need to be stitched on to stop it uh, losing its stick. Uh, but I recommend that you change your needle after doing that. And on the actual point of the needle, if you start seeing bits of glue, just stop and clean that off because otherwise you're going to um, end up with funny stitches. So um, once we've got that, you're going to have um, three uh, three inch pieces um, of the hook tape and three three inch pieces of the loop tape. And uh, we're going to attach them each to an end of one of the straps. So then we're going to have two pairs of straps here. So um, attach these on and then stitch them in a little rectangle to hold them in place. So this next bit, you're going to need your door, your straps, a ruler and some pins. Um, if you bring the um, yourself to the top of the door, we're going to mark in two and a half inches from that outside finished edge 
Uh, you can place these wherever you want, but this is where we've found them to be kind of most effective. Um, there we go. So that's we're going to be lining the straps up like this so that they are inside that two and a half inches, not centered over it. Um, that's where we're going to be putting them. Next, you want to get the two um, uh, furry sides, the two soft sides to your door straps. And we're going to place them furry side down underneath the door. So um, make sure that you've got the exterior side of your door facing up. So that's the door handle should be on this side here. The interior side of your door facing down. If they're at the same like me, it doesn't really matter. It's just going to make a difference what side the door handle's on. Um, so if you've got a preference, obviously do that now. But um, place your, your straps furry side down. And then place your door um, interior side on top of this. And we're going to just make sure these straps are lined up. And in fact, I'm just going to pin them to hold them in place while we do the next bit. Then you want to get your other two straps and we're going to there the scratchy side the hook side and we're going to place those scratchy side down on top so there now should be a little sandwich with the furry side underneath the scratchy side on top and both of the hook and loop parts are facing down under uh, towards the bottom there we go so that's now attached we're going to um uh, stitch these on using a quarter inch seam allowance but what I would recommend you do first is just pretend you're playing with the tent for a moment roll it up from the bottom you're about to go inside your tent you're going to lift your straps up and then you want to attach them and just make sure that they are both facing the right direction to attach so that is attached to the tent and you've now got a hole you can crawl through so uh, that's how it's going to work check you've got them the right way around before you stitch them on now stitched these on and uh, they're all attached um, what I have done is I've gone back and forwards a number of times over the top inside that quarter inch seam allowance because I know that my kids are really likely to yank on these so if you've got children that are going to pull on these when they're playing then I do recommend going back and forwards a couple of times so long as you keep it around the quarter inch so it's inside that half inch seam allowance uh, then it will be hidden in the final item 